tonight on Cox Forum. Over the past four years, drug overdoses have killed more than 400 kids and young adults right here in Orange County. Parents of the victims are now fighting back and you'll meet them coming up next here on Cox Forum. One of the weapons on this war against prescription drugs is a documentary. It was one that was started here in Orange County, but now being shown in schools across the country. Let's take a quick look now at Overtaken. I was curious. I was very undereducated. I did not know what I was getting myself into. I lost my best friend. Uh, he died in my hands um, from a, a, what we call a hot shot of heroin. It was heroin that was poisoned. And, um, and that really didn't stop me. It really didn't phase me. My son was 19 years old when he passed away on January 8th. If I could take it all back, I definitely would, because this has brought me to some nasty places that I would never want to be. 80% of the people that I started getting loaded with are either dead in jail or still out there doing it. My son will never have the chance to celebrate his 21st birthday. He'll never have the chance to have a, have a girlfriend. He never had a girlfriend. He'll never have the chance to get married, have kids. Making wrong decisions will ruin your life. I was died in 2009. My name is Asia Armour. I went to a private high school as a varsity cheerleading. But when I was 18, I was overdosed on ecstasy. I lost control, basically. I, I was failing all my classes. I wasn't showing up for family events. And to me, the biggest thing I lost was myself. It's just not right. It's not. It's not the life that we're supposed to live. We're not supposed to be doing this stuff to our bodies. People that have never done a drug in their life take one drug, and we're talking about drugs that with one use can alter your brain chemistry to where you have to have that drug, period. It can happen to anybody. And by doing it one time, one time, that could be one too many. It's not worth it, you know, it's absolutely not worth it. If I could fast forward my life and look where my life would go, um, from the not first night I tried it, which was just a party, it was just fun, we're just teens having a good time, um, and, and see where my life went, I never would have done it. I absolutely never would have done it. When the time comes for you to decide, what are you going to do? Just a very brief look at a remarkable documentary called Overtaken. Let's meet some of the people that helped to put that together. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you Jody Barber. She is the mother of Jared and, and was really the driving force uh, behind putting this uh, documentary together. You saw her on the film. We're going to hear a little bit about Jared's story in a moment. Also with us tonight is Christine Brandt. She is uh, also um, involved in the film, uh, put together the f actually put together the film as well. And she, of course, is uh, a concerned mother and somebody who uh, sees the uh, all too tragic side of what goes on from the inside of an emergency room and happens all too often right here in South Orange County. Dr. Robert Win uh, Winokur is the uh, director of Mission Hospitals ER. Welcome to all of you. Um, Jody, t t tell us about what, what happened to Jared. Well, Jared started with marijuana and it, of course, led to pills. And um, what happened was he, we, we caught him nodding off and we went to get him help. And he was given a quarter of a pill called Opana. And um, that pill, along with the other pills he was on for help, uh, the combination is what... Four minutes. Is what overdosed. Mm -hmm. He, uh, we... He was sitting on the sofa with a couple friends and um, we went to bed at 11 o'clock and he looked fine. And then we woke up at three in the morning and we did find him on the sofa barely breathing and my husband did CPR and um, 
I called 911 and he, uh, he passed away at Mission Hospital. Hmm. Had you ever heard of Opana before? I had never heard of Opana before. I, I knew, actually, I knew nothing about pills, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is to yeah. educate now because if I knew now what I, I wish I knew then, I could maybe save his life, but I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. And Opana is what's killing a lot of the kids in our area. What is Opana, doctor? Opana is a synthetic opiate. Uh, there are all these drugs or derivatives of uh, heroin. Uh, and uh, these are time-release medications that were meant for a very specific population, mm -hmm. predominantly the oncology patient, the patient in severe pain. These are time-released uh, pills that are coated with a substance meant to dissolve over a period of uh, 8 to 12 hours. But uh, in order to get the immediate high or immediate rush from these pills, simply by removing the coating, the exterior of the uh, pill by scraping it with a razor blade or by using a hose clamp and grating it down and snorting it or shooting it, these become immediately uh, available drugs to the bloodstream and brain. And so what was meant to be time released over 12 hours is immediately accessible to the brain and extremely potent. And as one of the people in this film points out, it just takes one pill to do this. It takes one pill and uh, you know what happens with kids is they share these things and mm -hmm. they think by splitting it in thirds or splitting it in halves it's safer which is actually incorrect that makes it more potent. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they do that is because they want to fill it quicker, quicker. Yeah. a quicker high. Christine, how would you get involved with, with this film? Um, I saw Jody's posters around town. She mm -hmm. has posters that have pictures of many of the kids that have mm -hmm. passed away. There's a sample of it. She was hanging it up around our community to offer help to families whose kids are addicted to drugs. Um, I reached out to her and then I started educating myself on the topic um, and really realized that our kids need to be educated on the type of drugs that are taking so many lives. Orange County has a lot of great distinctions. It's yes. got one that's not so good though. Mm -hmm. Right. I was shocked to learn Orange County is number two in the nation for accidental fatal overdoses in the ages 15 to 24. We've seen a 146% increase in three years in fatal overdoses, and a great number of that is attributed to pills. Mm -hmm. I, I guess what's really scary, and I guess what scared you when you looked at this, these pictures, you know, this happened to your son, and you'd think kids would learn from a friend having that happen to mm -hmm. him, but it happened to a lot of other people that were also friends. Well, it, it's true because this whole row knew each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here Jared passed away, and then his friend was in the Army for a year, and he came home for a service, and then he relapsed and died, and it only takes one time, and he died. And then his other friend, Riley, passed away 10 months later. And Ryan, they were all friends, and it's devastating. They. They are so addicted to these pills that they can't stop, even with so many friends that are dying. Is this something, doctor, that parents can, can see? Is there, are there warning signs that, that parents can notice? Sure, sure. Most of these uh, pills uh, really cause, uh, cause uh, an immediate high. And uh, one of the side effects of be being immediately high is being sleepy. So if your kid is falling asleep at the, at the dinner table, puts their head That's down and definitely. falls asleep, if you find the paraphernalia, particularly like razor blades, hose clamps, tin foil, things like that that are laying around that aren't necessarily, you know, shouldn't be in there at the, the proper place. And, uh, you know, not coming to family activities and things like that. Mm. Thanks so much for being with us and letting us know about this. If you want more information, find out about the documentary. Simply, uh, we'll put the information on the screen. Go to our website, cox3.com, and click on the Cox Forum link. That is a dubious distinction to say the least. Tonight we are indeed talking about the terrible toll that prescription drugs are taking on our kids here in Orange County. Right now let's take a look at a video that tells us about another type of death.
the dance we share beneath the stars above for a moment all the world was right and how could I have known that you'd ever say goodbye and now Let's meet now the uh, folks who were just featured in that uh, wonderful video there. Uh, wonderful but very sad. Yes. Um, Thank you. Sherry Rubin. Yes. Um, and her son, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Welcome, to both of you. Thank uh, you. Uh, you did that yourself. I, I don't know if I could have done that. It, it was um, emotionally challenging. Um, there was a lot of stop and stop and go points with crying and. Um, my husband telling me to stop, um, but I really felt that Aaron's story needed to be told. It's far too common. Uh, we were planning Aaron's funeral when he overdosed, mm. and between Aaron and God, he got to live, um, and I don't take that gift lightly. Mm -hmm. and. I believe that everyone should understand the dangers of prescription pills and understand that they're, that they're not perceived harmful and they are very harmful and that we need to limit access to them, especially in our homes. They need to be locked up and put away. And so I made the video when we were going to do a presentation with the DEA in San Diego and I just kind of popped up and did the video and since then we've been working with them and we do presentations at high schools and any and many organizations um, and, and the one thing that I think is really important that parents need to educate themselves mm. and I had no idea 
about prescription pills or really about drugs other than telling my ch kids not to yeah, do them. Don't do it. Yeah, exactly don't do like it. all of us do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't really protect our children, our communities, if we're not educated. And if we don't educate ourselves in on this epidemic, which is a national epidemic, we won't have a nation with functioning people. D did you have any warning signs at all before the overdose that Aaron was involved in, in taking uh, these prescription drugs? In my mom, as in my mind as a mother at that time, absolutely not. Yeah. Now, knowing Looking and being back, educated yeah. of all the things I've learned in the last few years, absolutely. Mm. You, you said that you, we've got to limit access to, to things mm -hmm. like this drugs. How did Aaron get a hold of, of this Well, drug? Um, we didn't have any pills in our house, but Aaron, did you get them from friends? One for yes, two for no. Yes, because of Aaron's overdose, he is now quadriplegic and he can't speak, but he understands everything and he answers one for yes and two for no. So, and did you get them from Mexico, Aaron? One for yes, two for no. Yes. Mm, okay, so mm -hmm. friends got them from Mexico mm -hmm. and gave it to him. And how, do you know how long he was doing, taking the Oxycontin before he, he overdosed? I believe you started in the 10th grade, is that correct? Yes, yeah. and um, then he overdosed when he was 23. Mm -hmm. So I would say like five years, mm -hmm. five years. Uh, Aaron, did you think that anything bad was gonna happen to you? One for yes, two for no. No, you no. never knew? Mm -hmm. Once you were on, it, so it sounds like you were on for a while. When you wanted to stop, were you able to? You weren't? No. no. Do yeah. you think that's common that, that, that kids think they can stop at any time? And Absolutely. And, and that's another misconception um, that we try to help educate about is about addiction. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, because we're not educated, believe that someone is continuing to use drugs or alcohol because of a choice, mm -hmm. because they're making a stupid choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe they did make a choice the first time or the second time. But addiction is a disease. And once it becomes a disease with these pills, which could happen within the first time of taking them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need to maintain that d disease like you would diabetes or anything else. It isn't that nobody wants to be an addict. Mm -hmm. And they just have to realize that this is a disease that has to be maintained and get the proper channels and the proper help and understand fully that this is a lifelong disease that has to be maintained. And I think that, I certainly didn't understand that as a parent. Mm -hmm. I thought that there was the quick fix. Mm -hmm. Let's go to rehab, yeah. he'll be there six yeah. months, and yeah. then it's all hunky-dory. As you can not see true. today, it's not. And yeah. by so many tragic lives lost, mm -hmm. that's not true. So what, what a parent, looking back, in, in, in mm -hmm. what do you wish you had seen? during this whole time that he was taking care of it. I wish I would have not attributed his muscle aches and pains to football, his sweating <laughs> from saying he just worked out, mm -hmm. his sleeping at hours of the day when he shouldn't been because he said he had a cold with no physical signs of having a cold, his temper and his irate attitude when he couldn't get the drugs to hormones growing up and just being stubborn, um, to missing tinfoil that my husband used it for the barbecue, mm. to p spoons to my grandchildren that I thought I gave them to dig in the dirt, <laughs> and um, a rash of many other things. You've got a couple of websites that yes. talk about this. What are they? Yes, our edu educational website is www.pillskill.net, and our nonprofit website is www.hopetogether.org because truly together working with law enforcement, community, schools, and families is the only way that we can really deter this two-headed monster. Mm -hmm. Sherry and Aaron, thank you very much for being with us tonight. It's our pleasure. Thank you. We'll be right back.
And tonight we are talking about how kids here in Orange County, our kids, are being overtaken by prescription drugs. We welcome to this segment uh, Cole Edwards. He is a survivor of the uh, battle against uh, the uh, prescription drugs. And we welcome back also Christine Brandt and Judy Barber, the uh, women behind the documentary Overtaken that you saw a very short segment of at the beginning of the show. A little bit later, we'll tell you how you can watch the entire documentary or get a copy for your very own. Cole, what, what's your story? And how did you get the, what, what, what kind of drug, first of all, were you? Doing? Sure. Um, it began with marijuana um, and alcohol, and I quickly progressed found my drug of choice, Oxycontin, mm -hmm. um, and I used that I probably for the first time at 16 years old and got hooked very quickly and um, that became too expensive so I, I, I then quickly moved on to heroin. Mm. Wow. Right, so where did you get the Oxycontin from? Um, drug dealers. Um, one of the most, per, or where I got it most often was um, a friend's mom, um, she really? had it prescribed, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. She had it prescribed for pain and she would sell it to the neighborhood kids. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty scary. So what happened to you? What, what finally? Um, I mean, you know, we talk about a bottom. Um, the bottom for me was I was probably 17 years old. I ran away from home. I had stolen probably over $100,000 from my parents. and. Um, I was staying in a drug dealer's house and I went to my car to cook up a fix. I was shooting it um, at the time and my mom had found out where I, I was from a friend. She opened the door to the car. Um, the most important thing to me at that moment was my drugs so I, I, I hit reverse and I pulled off mm -hmm. and she got trapped underneath the car and she rolled off and I drove off. and that was the night where I said maybe there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. you know? what, now, what's your connection between your experience and, and their documentary? Um, how I met them? Yeah. She uh, actually through a mutual friend I'd heard that Jody went to schools and spoke and did mm -hmm. stuff like that and that was something that I was interested in so I believe I, I first spoke at a school and then they told me that they were doing a documentary. Mm -hmm. So much, I, I, you know, one of the things that strikes me watching the documentary, you know, so many, you know, anti-drug things, you, you get people from the DEA, or you get a, you know, some doctor, and you had a doctor very briefly, but it mostly was being told by kids. That's really what we wanted. We yeah. also wanted to show that this happens to good families, yeah. to good kids, um, kind of break that misconception that this can't happen here. Mm -hmm. Kids listen to other kids. Mm -hmm. And so we thought this message from kids, they give hope. And there's, there's hope with these kids because they all survived. They overdosed several times, they're still here. Um, my message is that my son, one time is all it took for him yeah. and he's not here. Yeah. So. Yeah, and and in that, it sort of presents a, a danger too because somebody can sit here and look at Cole and, 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 and Cole, they look at you and say, well, you, you know, yeah, he hit the bottom, but look at him, he looks great, you know, right. he's a smart kid, and sure. articulate the whole bit. What do you say to something like that? Um, it, uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done mm -hmm. to get clean, by far. It was the most painful, it was the most work I've ever put into anything. Uh, five rehabs. Wow. Um, uh, multiple overdoses. Um, it wasn't just I woke up one day and decided I was going to quit. That bottom, I didn't quit till three years later. So, and how old are you? Now? I'm 22. 22. So you're you're not very far down the line from sure. that, are you? Sure. Is, it, is it still hard for you? Still um, I I would say no. I mean I um, I do a lot of work to make sure that it's not. You mm -hmm. know. Um, but I don't put myself in sticky situations. Mm -hmm. I don't hang around with people who do pills, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. What do you say directly to kids? I mean, you know, knowing, knowing that you were on right. the other side of it at some point. And sure. Saying, yeah, sure. Wait, wait, wait. Kids who haven't done it yet? Yeah. Um, it's not worth it, you know. Um, it's, it's just not worth it. It's dangerous, you know. Um, knowing where my life went, as I said in the documentary, um, I never would have picked up. I mean, I love my life today and I'm grateful for it, but the damage that I caused and the pain that I caused my family, you know, it's tremendous. Okay, real quick, Judy, if, if there's anything that you want a parent or a kid to take away from the documentary, what would it be? I just want the message to be told that there is hope and that there's resources out there that they can get help. 
And um, with my website, they, if they go onto my website, One Choice Can Destroy, there are resources and they will find them and they can, don't be afraid to ask for help. And Christine, how can people uh, find this documentary? Uh, you can find us on YouTube if you uh, Google search Overtaken Documentary. Um, you can email us at overtaken, contact overtaken at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook and send us a private message. We'll be happy to refer you to places mm -hmm. you can get help, um, answer any questions. We give assemblies at churches, schools, you know, rehab centers. Jody and I pretty much go around all week long and um, s help give the message. Well, thanks for, for coming on tonight and, and, and sharing the message with us and, and the documentary. Um, I've had a chance, I've watched a couple of times now and, and, it, and it's, it's remarkable and, and very, very scary. If you missed any of the contact information, simply go to our website, cox3.com, click on the Cox Forum link and we'll give you the uh, contact information. You can also email us at forum at cox.com. We invite you to join us next week. We will be taking a look at what the UCI Mind Institute is doing as they are looking for a cure for Alzheimer's. Until then, thanks so much for joining us here on Cox Forum.